Uh, this morning, I want to continue our off and on year-long series, <laughs> off and on, on confident faith, confident faith, speaking about confident faith for our impossibilities in 2018, speaking about confident faith for uh, those unfulfilled expectations from years gone by. Confident faith to see God bring those things to pass. Confident faith to see God's intervention and, and do what's impossible with us that is always possible with God. So it's, we're, we're continuing that series for our unfulfilled expectations and our confident faith for our impossibilities in 2018. And so that's that year-long series. Now let me ask you something. Are you believing God... For an impossibility in 2018. Is there an impossibility you're faced with right now for 2018? Perhaps some need in your life. Perhaps a financial situation. Perhaps a health issue. Perhaps a marriage issue. Perhaps a career issue. And you're facing this impossibility that if, unless God intervenes, it just can't happen. Do you have an impossibility for 2018. I want you to think about that. I want you to get that in the forethought, the forefront of your thinking just for a minute. What is your impossibility? What area of your life does it relate to? Does it relate to perhaps a personal struggle you've been having? Does it, does it relate to uh, some issue that, that is between you and God? Does it relate to a need of some kind. So would you just do that? Would you just close your eyes? And I just want you to think about your impossibility for 2018. Something that can only happen by the power of God's intervention. In other words, you can't make it happen yourself. It's an impossibility in your own strength. What area of your life is it wrapped around? Finances, health, marriage, career. Okay, okay, look up here. It can only happen through confident faith. It's going to take confident faith to see that impossibility come to pass in 2018. And what the Holy Spirit's put on my heart is to share this truth with you. It's going to take confident faith. But with confident faith, your impossibility will happen. Those unfulfilled expectations of your past years gone by will happen. It's going to take confident faith. It's going to take more than the faith you've been operating in. The faith that has not produced anything yet. It's going to take more than the faith you hope you have because it hadn't produced anything yet. It's going to take confident faith. I'm hoping and praying to express this truth very clearly. So, so I read this this past week. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 12:10. So the teacher sought to find just the right words to express truths clearly. I'm hoping to have just the right words that I can exp express this truth so clearly that you begin to walk in confident faith for your impossibilities in 2018. And I've got a difficult message today. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to listen well to really capture it. Because it's going to change some of your thinking and it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of wedge in some things that are um, in concrete that need to be broke up. The word confidence in Webster's 1836 dictionary. I love the original dictionary. Back when words 
were defined properly. <laughs> he said this, confidence is defined as assurance of mind. Four ways, assurance of mind. Number two, a firm belief in the integrity and stability of another. A firm belief in the truth. And listen to this. Confidence is defined as trusting without suspicion. Trusting without suspicion. So confident faith for our impossibilities in 2018 would be defined as trusting God without suspicion. A firm belief in the truth of God's word. A firm belief in the integrity and the stability of God Almighty. Assurance of mind for my impossibilities. So that's the topic this week and actually next week too. Confident faith. Let's, let's just pray. Can we bow our heads? Father, we, we thank you that uh, you bring instruction to us from your word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, you open our ears to hear and our eyes to see. And we, we pray that, that this heart of ours would be broken up, the fallow ground of our heart would be broken up, that it could uh, receive, both receive and contain and produce life from the seed that you're about to plant in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to start our journey this morning by defining our faith. Defining our faith. Bringing a definition to our faith. Now, I'm not talking about faith according to biblical definition. I've, I've done that all through this series, defining biblical nef- definition of faith. I'm talking about the faith we're walking in. I'm talking about the faith we actually have. <laughs> I'm talking about defining that faith. <laughs> that stuff that we get up with every Monday morning and, and try to hold on to through, through till next Sunday. <laughs> I'm talking about that faith. Um, and... You know, if you want to revisit the website, you can hear parts one through five of this series where I bring definition of faith and biblical understanding of faith. But today it's, it's do we have the faith defined by Webster's definition or something that looks totally different? And, and it's, it's so important and it's so wise to examine our foundation, this foundation of faith that's in us. Uh, in fact, 1 Corinthians 3.10 says, okay, Paul was saying, According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. We take heed how we build on this foundation. There is this foundation of faith in us, and we must take heed how we build on this foundation. So it's very important, very wise. So I want us to really um, get a clear definition of the faith that we are operating in so we can reach the prize of confident faith, that very faith that will enable you to see those impossibilities come to pass in 2018. And I'm going to tell you something. A faith exam, a faith examination, examination, when we're real honest and we're real sincere about it, it can look like running the gauntlet of the buffet line on a cruise ship. <laughs> Anybody ever been on a cruise ship during lunchtime? It's like running a gauntlet. Here you got this tray in your hand, you know, and you're getting in line for the, for the buffet on the cruise ship, and there's all this food over here, all these entrees, steaks and chicken and, and uh, Mexican food and, and, and uh, Chinese food, all these trays or, or these areas where you can get this food, amazing, beautiful food. And then there's all this dessert bar over here. I often get hung up right there. And then there's the salad bar and the, and the bread and the drinks, and here you are with your tray, and you got your eye on the prize, and you're going over there with all these people. Excuse me, sorry me. Sorry, and so you're running this gauntlet of bumping into people. <laughs> sorry, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, because all the time your eyes on the prize, <laughs> and, so, and so it's just it's like this gauntlet. People bumping into you, and I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been such an amazing prize. But every day I'd be bumping into them right there with me. And examining our faith is like that. We bump into what is and ought to be. We bump into the truth of, of 
is this my faith or does my faith look like something else? We bump into this thing that's beautiful and we want over here, but we know in our heart we're never going to make it because there's just too many obstacles. So a faith examination, a faith examination is wise, but we have to run the gauntlet of what is real and what is not real. Just fix our eyes on the prize. First, some people's faith I'll define as seeing is believing faith. I'll believe it when I see it. You know, that kind of faith. That kind of faith looks and sounds like when I see it with my own eyes, I'm going to believe it. You guys don't know what I'm talking about, but you guys, you know. It's a seeing is believing it kind of faith. I'm just kidding. Our thought processes are, I'll believe it when I see it. And, and sometimes the people we're talking to about our impossibilities, we'll even, we'll even say that, I, you know, I'm going to believe this. I just need to see it. You know? And even when someone is telling us about their impossibilities, and we're listening to them declare their faith to us about their impossibilities. We're thinking the whole time, sometimes even saying, well, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> we're not even able to agree with them in faith because we're thinking, yeah, I'll believe it when I see that. You're believing for what? Okay. This faith is founded on eyesight. If I'm not seeing it, Today, if I'm not seeing it day after day, if I'm not seeing it month after month, if I'm not seeing it year after year, I'm going to have a real hard time believing it. I call this faith, seeing is believing faith, and it's definitely not confident faith, trusting God without suspicion. Second, some people's faith I'll define as hopeful faith. Hopeful faith. I believe it, and I hope to see it. <laughs> I'm hoping, and I'm hoping, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping to see it. Oh, I think about that impossibility. Oh, I'm hoping to see it, and I'm hoping to see it. Hopeful faith. Which is a great thing, because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this faith looks like, I'm, Lord, I'm hoping for my impossibility. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. But it sounds and looks different than confident faith. In the, thro in the thought processes in our vocally to other people, it sounds like I'm going to keep on hoping. God, you see me hoping. Little if any confidence, little if any assurance of mind. Maybe my faith's not all what it should be, but I'm hoping. Thirdly, some people's faith is defined as doubtful faith. Doubtful faith. And that looks like I'm doing my best not to doubt. I'm believing for this impossibility. I'm believing for unfulfilled expectations from the past. And I'm doing my absolute dadgum best not to doubt. <laughs> Doubtful faith. Well, that sure doesn't look like confident faith. Probably the opposite of confident faith. No firm belief in the truth of God's word. Like that man that said to Jesus, Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I'm doing my best not to doubt. Doubtful faith. And the Lord sees and hears us doing our best not to doubt. You know? 
But the evidence of things not seen looks like doubt to the Lord. So I call this doubtful faith. Probably the opposite of confident faith. And then there's number four. There's what I call questioning faith. Questioning faith. Some people have that questioning faith. Faith that is governed by questions. What if this happens? How can that happen? But what about what they're doing? What about what they're saying? Look what's going on here. How can my impossibility ever come to pass? Look at this. Look at this situation I'm facing. It's questioning faith. That doesn't look like confident faith. Full of questions. The substance of things hoped for looks like question after question after question. No firm belief in the integrity and stability of God. But question after question after question. Like the disciples who woke up Jesus. Don't you care that we're perishing? <laughs> the boat's sinking, God. <laughs> you know? Don't you care the boat's sinking? You know, he's asleep in the boat. And they had all these questions. Oh, doesn't he even care? You think you want to wake him up? Oh, you wake him up. You wake him up. Let's all go down there and wake him up and ask him if he knows the boat's sinking. <laughs> You've heard me say it before, and I heard Pastor Owen say this one time, my pastor. He said, you know why Jesus could sleep in the boat during the midst of a storm? Because he knew the boat was not his cross. And you're not going to sink either. Your boat's not your cross. Your boat's just getting you to the other side. That storm's about getting you to the other side. Maybe a bumpy ride, but Jesus calms the storm. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So I call this questioning faith. So questioning faith, doubtful faith, hopeful faith, and seeing is believing faith. And then there's what I'll define as confident faith, absolute confidence in God for impossibilities in 2018. It's assurance of mind. It's a firm belief in the integrity and stability of God. It's, it's a firm belief in the truth of God's word. It's, it's, this, it's, it's just this uh, trusting without any suspicion. Some people have that confident faith. Looks and sounds like, Lord, I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to doubt. I'm not even going to ask any questions. I trust you. I trust you so much it moves beyond my hope to absolute confidence. It's a faith that goes beyond it to becoming that which is unseen made seen. So I call it confident faith. So let me ask you a question as you run the gauntlet, bumping into what is and what is truth and what isn't and what ought to be with your tray. Which definition best describes the faith you are currently walking in? Questioning faith? Doubtful faith? Hopeful faith? Seeing as believing faith? Or confident faith? I know for me it's like sometimes all five. I mean, sometimes I have this questioning faith. God, what about this? How are you going to do this? That's almost $100,000 for that parking lot out there. Time we put the lights in, we got all the money but the money for the lights. But it's going to come in. I can see those lights lit up. Sometimes it's questioning faith, sometimes it's doubt-filled faith, and sometimes it's hopeful faith, and sometimes, sometimes it's I believe it when I see it faith, and sometimes it's absolute confident faith. So I, I find myself operating in all five at times, and I want to encourage you, uh, you may not believe it, 
But you have confident faith for some things. You have confident faith for some things. You have confident faith for some impossibilities. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Quit arguing with me. Yes, you do. I'll prove it to you. You have confident faith for the impossibility of salvation. Remember the story of the rich young ruler who came to the Lord and, you know, and uh, asking about how do I have eternal life? In fact, Matthew 19, 21. Let's just read it. Matthew 19, 21. should be on the screen. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the, the young man heard this, that saying, he went away sorrowful. He had great possessions. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Surely I, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished and saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The point of the teaching is the impossibility of salvation, but God making it possible. I mean, it's, it's, the point he's making is not just about the cost of following the Lord. It's not just about uh, how hard it is for people of great wealth to enter the kingdom of God and, and make that kind of sacrifice. The, the point of the message is what is impossible with man, God made possible. That's the point of the teaching. That's the, in my opinion, that is the primary context of that teaching. You can disagree. It's okay. This is not a cult. You don't get to disagree in a cult. They kick you out of the cult if you disagree with them. But to me, the whole thing, it all boils down to, listen, boys, what is impossible with man, this thing called salvation, is possible because of God. I heard amen and amen and amen. I don't know what y'all heard. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, each one of you have confident faith for an impossibility, the impossibility of your own salvation. Am I, is that not true? Are you not confident about your salvation because of the grace of God, because of the love of God, because of the forgiveness of God, because of the mercy of God? Are you not standing in absolute confident faith concerning your salvation? Is there, is there not a confident faith in you concerning salvation, the impossibility of salvation? Are you not standing unwavering without doubt, not questioning? Are you not believing God in spite of not seeing it with your own eyes yet? You already have confident faith for that impossibility. I mean, think about it. Do you have, it's an honest question. Do you have confident faith about your own salvation? Do you have questioning faith about your salvation? Do you have doubtful faith about your salvation? Do you have hopeful faith about your salvation? We're seeing as believing faith. <laughs> believe it when I see it. Or do you not stand with this assurance of mind, this confidence that because of what God did, I am saved? You have it. That's my point. You have it for your impossibility of salvation. You may not have it for your impossibilities in 2018, but you have it for your salvation. And if you don't have it, I want to speak to you right after service today. I want to speak to you during the altar time. I want to, I want to introduce you to some of my pastoral team that will help you understand how God made the impossible possible. And if you're, if you're not sure of your salvation, if you're not confident about your own salvation... We just want to, we want to get with you. We want to help you understand it. Chances are you're a convert, but you've never been discipled. Jesus said, go and make disciples, not just convert. Chances are you've never been discipled, so you don't have an understanding of why you can stand there confident in your faith about your own salvation. So I want to pray with you at the end of service today. I want to 
help you. I want to set you on a course. In fact, you can pull out one of those red cards out of the back of your chair and just fill that out and put it in a black box and we'll have someone contact you just to help you with your understanding about salvation, how God made the impossible possible. But why is it we have this confident faith concerning our salvation, but we don't have confident faith concerning our impossibility? <laughs> why is that? Why is that? So I want to make a statement to you. I want to say this to you. Competent faith is created by strong convictions. In other words, you can't be talked out of it. You can't be convinced otherwise. You have these strong convictions about your competent faith for salvation. Something's happened that is producing you strong convictions. Devil can't talk you out of it. The man can't talk you out of it. The world can't talk you out of it. You stand there with these strong convictions. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven because of the grace of God, the mercy of God, the truth of God's word. And you're standing there with these strong convictions that nobody can convince you otherwise. If you take your salvation and, and it wouldn't matter if someone threatens your life, you deny Christ. To deny Christ, you say, no, I'm not going to because I have strong convictions. wouldn't matter if someone threatened you or if someone tried to deceive you in believing you're not saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2.8 says, we are, uh, for grace you have been saved through faith. It's, it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. wouldn't matter if some false teacher is trying to convince you you're not saved by grace. wouldn't matter if some false teacher or the devil is trying to convince you you're not good enough. When all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So none of us are good enough. Because you have strong convictions that you are righteous through Christ. Wouldn't matter if the world was trying to convince you there's some other way to the Father. When we know what Jesus said, there's only one way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to me except, no one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus. Wouldn't matter some false teacher or, or Buddhism or Hinduism or humanism or Oprahism, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> because you have been established with this strong conviction that there is no other way. So, why is it we have this strong conviction about our salvation and we don't have that about our impossibility? A better question is, how can we have the same strong conviction for our impossibility as we do for our salvation? How can we have that same thing? Well, let me ask you this. How did you get such a strong, unwavering conviction? So strong you can't even be talked out of it about your salvation. How did you get that? How did that happen? I want you to think about this. How did that happen? Because most of you in here would say, that's right, Pastor. I have a strong conviction about my salvation. That impossibility. But this other impossibility, I keep bumping into it. Pardon me. Sorry. No. Oh. <laughs> well, at some point in your life, a foundation of truth was established in your heart. I say in your heart because the belief system is established in the heart. In fact, Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth one confession is made unto salvation. So our belief system is established in our heart. So at some point in your life, a foundation of truth was established in your heart, in your belief system. And that tr truth created strong convictions that produce in you now confident faith for my own impossibility of being saved. So are you with me? That truth created strong convictions. Those convictions produced confidence confident faith 
In other words, confident faith is the fruit of strong convictions of truth. Strong convictions of truth. Established in your heart. Strong, strong convictions of truth established in your heart. Producing confident faith for my impossibility in 2018. At some point in time, John 3.16 was established. That truth. God so loved the world. That gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have ever, everlasting eternal life. That truth that God loves you. God so loved the world. He loves you. Just believe that truth. You see, that truth was established in your heart. So now this impossibility of salvation is, is beginning to uh, come. And with that uh, foundation comes this confident faith, that truth. At some point, the truth of being saved by grace was established in your heart. That it's all about a gift. At some point, that truth that you're righteous in Christ Jesus became established in your heart. You see how this is working? Because these truths are established in our heart, the result of that are these strong convictions that produce this confidence. Believing without suspicion. Assurance of mind. Firm belief in the stability and the integrity of God Almighty. So let's back up. <clears throat> because we can now say I have confident faith for that impossibility, but why can't I say it about my impossibility in 2018? Let's back up. And let's talk about the missing link. The missing link in our foundation the missing link is the truth established in our foundation that creates these strong convictions. The missing link is what's missing in this foundation, what's missing in the, the truth that's missing in the foundation. Because if that truth was in the foundation, we would have strong convictions. And those strong conviction, con, uh, convictions would look like this confident faith coming out of our mouth and in our walk. So we have to back all the way up to what's in the foundation or what's not in the foundation or what's in the foundation that needs to be removed from the foundation like a jackhammer. Let me ask you a gauntlet question. I'm going to keep you eye on the prize. But let me ask you a gauntlet question. Do you have strong convictions about your impossibility for 2018? That thing you thought about at the first of service, do you have strong convictions about that? Do you have the same kind of strong convictions you already have about your salvation? Does it even look like that kind of faith? You can tell by your confidence. You can tell by how confident you are. We must have foundations of truth for our impossibilities in 2018. Foundations of truth established concerning our impossibilities that are so built in us, so part of our foundation in our heart, our belief system, that those strong convictions produce competent faith. Foundations of truth for our impossibilities. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's stop right here. And I'll pick up on this next week. I don't want to rush this. Because it's important that you understand this. 
If you're going to see the impossibilities come to pass, you've got to understand what I'm going to share with you. I don't want to rush it. And, and, so, and plus, I want to be very considerate of our volunteer people working with our children. And you, many of y'all know what that's like to be working with the children and the, and the message go long. Not that I would ever go long. <laughs> but I want to finish this next week. And I also want to speak to you about uh, how testing, the testing of our faith creates confident faith how the testing of our faith creates confident faith i'll speak about that next week too as i finish up um but just as strong convictions create confident faith so does the testing of our faith create confident faith and some of y'all may be going through that faith testing right now um and and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of your faith being tested i won't ask for a show of hands but faith testing creates confident faith. I, I do have a quote from uh, Dr. Leroy. <laughs> I read this in the Chronicles of Leroy. And doctor, concerning those who are sick of faith testing, he said, Dr. Leroy said, Faith tests are best taken with a dose of prayer, a script from the great physician, and getting plenty of rest from your burden. Amen? If I could have the worship team come up here. We're going we're gonna to end our service with prayer. <laughs> and plenty of rest from your burden. So says Dr. Leroy. And that script from the great physician is so important. So let's, let's just stand. Let's just stand, bow our heads. We're going to end in prayer. We like to always end our service with prayer and praying for people who may need, uh, may need prayer for whatever. Confident faith is created by strong convictions of truth established in your heart. And I want you to run the gauntlet of testing or examining your own faith, defining your own faith. But let's just stand for a moment. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. And I just wonder, can we close our eyes? Can we bow our heads? I just wonder if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I just don't have the confident faith I need for my salvation. I have that questioning faith or that doubtful faith and I just don't have the faith I need, the confident faith I need for salvation. And if that's you today, we, we just want to pray for you. We have, an, uh, we have a prayer team at the altar today that will come up and they'll pray for you. And what's going to happen is this, the Holy Spirit's just going to speak to you. You're going to walk out of here with a greater confidence than you ever had before about being saved. I don't want you to forget to, to fill out one of those cards and drop it in the black box so we can get you more information that will help you. Lord, as we end our service today, I just pray that you would help us all run the gauntlet. And then we'd examine our faith uh, to know what is being built upon it. I pray that you would give us a confident faith for our impossibilities in 2018. That you would cause your truth to, so, to be so founded that we can build our house on it. Grant us this request, Lord. Holy Spirit, come now and just begin to release in us greater measures of faith, greater measures of confidence in you, Lord God. Help us to keep our eyes upon the prize. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all come for prayer as we sing this last song. Let's sing this song just about exactly what Pastor was talking about. And just see your impossibility for 2018 as we, as we, as we sing this. Yes, Lord. Strengthen our hearts, God. We love you, Father.
sing with me. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness Stealing your hand this is my confidence You've never failed me yet Yes, Lord I know the night won't last <laughs> Your word will come to you My heart will sing your praise again. We believe, Lord. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Yeah. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. <laughs> I'm sealing your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. Still, still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm stealing your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. <laughs> oh, you never failed me. Oh, Jesus, we believe. Yeah. We believe, Father. Oh, with confident faith. Your promises are going to be revealed, God, in your time. Hey. Seen you do it before. I've seen you move. <laughs> you move the mountains. And I believe we'll see you do it again. Made a way where there was no way. Yes, Lord. I'll see you we'll do, see you do it, it again. again. Yeah. You move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. Father, we believe. We'll I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. Yes, Lord. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness, God. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Hey, great in your stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. 
I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. No, I never will forget. Thank you, Jesus. Never failed me. You never failed me. Never will forget. Yes, Lord. Oh, create in us a clean heart, God. Create in us a, a heart that, that you can work out your plans and your purposes through confident faith, Lord. Create in us, in us a heart that looks to you with absolute faith at what you're going to do, God. We love you. Let's go out and, and just plant seeds of confident faith all week long. Amen. Let's go out and do his work. Amen. You're dismissed. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Still in your hands. You're my confidence. Yeah. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I see you do it again. Yeah. I see you do it again.